as a very common special case of motion with constant acceleration, we often use these situation we call projectile motion, where the object is accelerating only under the influence of gravity, which, as we know, the acceleration due to gravity would be constant as long as you're close to the Earth. This particular question deals with a dolphin flying through the air. The question itself here has to do a lot with following the textbook's way of solving the problem, which I'm not a huge fan of, so we're going to cut through all that and just focus on answering the question itself. So cleaning it off a bit, the question is actually not as long as it seems. Okay, so here we're dealing with a dolphin just jumping out of the water. It's got the fin there and it's swimming really fast, so there's some speed lines and there's the tail fin. Of course, dolphin is a very big body, but the only point we're caring about, as most of these things we do in the course, is just the center of the dolphin. So say at time equals zero, the dolphin, the center of the dolphin is just coming out of the water, which we will call our y equals zero point, which is the water level. We use y because it's vertical. And we know at this point, y naught is zero, v naught is 13 meters per second. Which seems fairly fast, but dolphins are fast swimmers, so why not? Okay, so they're asking, how high does this body rise above the water? So basically at some time later, it's gonna go straight up, we're assuming that anyways, under the influence of gravity, it's gonna slow down, right? It's gonna go fast, fast, and slower, and slower, until at the very top, it comes to a stop. So then we'll call that T1. At this point, the dolphin is doing some graceful arcing motion. And again, we're only caring about the middle of the dolphin. Here, whatever this is, that's my Y max in this case. That's my Y1. And at the very top of the motion, V1 is zero because it's in the midst of turning around. It was going positive before, and then it was it's gonna start going negative. So at that crossover point, at the top of your flight, the vertical velocity should be zero. So using those information, we can find out what Y max is. And then for part C, how long does it stay in the air? Meaning how long until the dolphin speeds back up and gets back to this point again? And again, speed lines. Oh, I forgot the fit. So here we have T2, where we know that Y2 is once again zero, and we don't know what V2 is, and we don't know what T2 is. That's what we're interested in. So there's a couple ways that we can get there, and we'll show you how for part C. But let's go for part B for now first. Part B, we're interested in Y max, right? So at some time later, the position is given by some initial position plus the initial speed plus one half AT square. No different from what we've been doing before. The only new thing is we, because we're dealing with acceleration due to gravity, we know that throughout this whole motion, no matter what time, acceleration does not change. It's always equal to 9.81 meters per second square downwards, right? And since we're calling V zero upwards as positive, then that must mean we must call the acceleration being downwards to be negative because it's in the opposite direction. There's nothing inherent in the acceleration due to gravity that makes it negative, it just always is pointing downwards. And we often say positive upwards, so it ends up negative many a times. Again, not necessarily so, we can define whichever we like. So this looks sort of viable, except that we don't know the time either. But we do know the final velocity, so we can make use of this. 
using this to solve for time and then sub back into here. And this I've shown you in class, hopefully, and you can use this result. Once we combine these two, it always follows the same path. What we'll get is we'll get 2 times delta y times the acceleration is equal to vf squared minus the original v squared. And now we can sub it in because we know y, delta y is y1 minus y0, and we know everything else now. Rearranging, we can get v1 squared minus vo squared all divided by 2a is equal to my delta y, which is y1 minus y0, so y1, which is my y max, is given by v1 squared minus vo squared over 2a plus y0. And of course we know that this is zero and also the speed at the top is also zero as we talked about. So subbing the numbers in, negative 13 meters per second all square over two times negative 9.81 meters per second square because gravity is accelerating the dolphin downwards. So initially slowing it down. And the negative signs cancel out. The negative here is outside the square, so that doesn't matter. So the negative here cancels out. Units wise, you have meter square over second square divided by meters per second square. So you end up with units of meters, which is good because we're looking for the height. Using the calculator, you find that you get 8.62 meters. Since the dolphin is going quite high, that's not so surprising. And for those of you who have seen dolphin shows, shouldn't be too surprised that the dolphin jumps about 10 meters in the air. It's an impressive show. So again, neat little sentence. The dolphin rises 8.62 meters above the water. Okay, part C. How long is a dolphin in the air? And here, we have to make use of the symmetry of the projectile motion. There's two ways you can approach it, and I'll show you both the ways. Because the acceleration is constant, what happens is the exact time it takes for the dolphin to go from this speed to stop and cover that distance will be the exact same time that the dolphin from stop will speed up and come down. So there's two choices. You can either say that the total time, which is T2, that the dolphin is in the air, is equal to twice of the time it takes for it to go to the very top. The other symmetry we can talk about is that however much speed the dolphin loses going to the very top, he gains it all back as he comes back down. So you can also say that you know v2 is the same size as the original speed because they're the same height, but in opposite direction, negative. So let's do it both ways and we'll see that the answers agree. Using this first method, to get t2, we need t1. And t1 we can get using v1 is equal to v0 plus at because we know v0. We know v1 is 0, so we can solve for t1. Rearranging, that's t1. So you have 0 minus 13 meters per second over negative 9.81 meters per second square, giving us, keeping a few more sick face because that's not our final answer. And so therefore, t2 is twice as big as that, giving us 2.65, this is our final answer, so we'll round it down to 3 sig fix, 2.65 seconds. Or, you can make use of this, knowing that v2 is equal to, from the beginning, v0 plus a t2, t2 being from t0 to t2. We can again isolate for t2 in a very similar looking fashion except that we know v2 
is not zero because it's not at the top. It's actually negative 13 meters per second minus another 13 meters per second for the V zero divided by negative 9.81 meters per second square. And through the calculator, you'll once again find that that is going to give us the exact same number as before. So the dolphin will be in the air for 2.65 seconds. So that's a situation where we often apply our understanding of constant acceleration to, which is these projectile motion problems. And we can make use of certain symmetries in the motion to make our lives easier.